What's going on everybody, Estas here, and in today's video I'm going to be breaking down swing trading versus day trading, these two heavily talked about trading strategies in the stock market, my personal experiences with them, what I personally like better, and giving some pros and cons of both of these strategies so you, the viewers out there, can hopefully find out what may better suit you with your particular life circumstances and your day-to-day -day tasks. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat. There's over 800 people in there, active investors and traders. That is linked down below in the description box, and let's get right into the video, guys. So to give a brief definition of what swing trading is and what day trading is so we can get a better understanding of what these are, right? Swing trading is when you buy a stock one day and you hold it overnight hold it two weeks, hold it two months, right? It's pretty much you buy and you don't sell that same day, you hold it for a specified period of time, whatever that time period may be. And day trading on the other side is you buy a stock one day and you sell it that same day, right? Let's say a stock is running up during earnings or something like that and you want to hop in very quickly, get some intraday action in that stock, that's considered a day trade, right? But let's say you're swinging a stock for a week, let's say it dipped, you want to buy into that dip and ride the reversal upwards, that's considered a swing trade if you hold it for a week or more, right? So that's just a brief breakdown of what swing trading is and what day trading is. So me personally, I consider myself more of a swing trader and that's honestly because that's what I started with, believe it or not. When I first got into trading in the stock market, I wasn't one of these guys that, you know, I did dabble into penny stocks here and there, but I wasn't one of these guys that jumped in head first and day traded every single day starting off the bat, right? I actually came into it looking at swing trading and during the time period that I actually started trading I was a full-time student and I also had a job at this time so for me it seemed more sustainable to swing trade because with day trading you have to be on your computer looking at charts keeping up with things in real time for an extended period of time you know it could be an hour two hours three hours and I didn't really have that time during the day right because I was at my day job I was a student full-time as well, I had a lot of things going on, but I resorted to swing trading, which you can actually look at charts for 10, 15, 20 minutes, keep up with news that takes about 20, 30 minutes, and you can actually enter into positions, profit, mitigate risk, and of course, you have to know what you're doing at this point in time, but you can actually pull it off with only 30, 45 minutes, an hour per day of doing research and studying charts, so I figured that was more sustainable for me, but then as the years went on. Obviously, I scaled up my swing trading strategy, and then I started to dabble more into day trading, especially as I went in full-time with what I'm doing right now, which again is e-commerce trading, right? Swing trading and day trading, and this whole YouTube channel and brand that I'm trying to build here. So as I got deeper and deeper into day trading, I realized how different it was from swing trading. So for example, you know, sometimes when I was day trading, I'd make a certain amount of money in one day that took me a week, two weeks, maybe even three weeks to make on a position swing trading, right? So you can make a lot more money day trading, right? That's what I've noticed. But the thing is, you can also lose a lot more money because when you're hopping into these volatile stocks during earnings periods, you know, these penny stocks and just volatile low cap stocks in general, you can catch up swings that give you 10, 15, 20%, but you can also be caught in a 5, 10% whole if you're not mitigating your risk correctly. So through my experiences of day trading and swing trading in the stock market, I've been able to compile a list of pros and cons of each that I want to share with you guys right now. So let's get right into it. So the swing trading pro, one of the biggest pros is that you don't have to be locked at your computer for multiple hours. You can literally buy a position, set a stop loss, and then go on with your day. Another interesting thing you can do is you can actually set an OCO bracket order, which stands for one cancels the other. And I know some brokerages don't have this. I don't think Robin 
Robinhood, um, M1 Finance, some of the discount brokerages, they don't have this setting. But if you use Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, and I'm sure some of the other ones, you'll be able to set these types of orders. And what they are is, again, a one cancels the others so you can set a limit sell order and a stop loss so pretty much that means let's say you hop into a position at $32 and let's say that stock you want to sell it at $35 so you can set a limit sell at $35 so if that stock were to hit that you'd get the profit right and let's say you set a stop loss at $31 so let's say it sold off from 32 to 31 that's where you want to cut your loss that's that's how you mitigate your risk. Once it hits that, it'll sell all your shares. So you won't lose a lot of money, right? And once one order hits, the other one cancels. And this is very good for those people that want to be passive, that work a day job. They can't get to a computer. They can buy a stock, set an OCO order. And if the stop hits, it cancels the limit sell. If you sell your shares, the limit sell hits, it cancels the stop. So that's a very awesome thing about swing trading. And also, you you can do this literally around the world. If you're from the United States, I've literally done this myself. If you have a United States brokerage account, you can go to other countries. I was just in Mexico a couple of weeks ago. I was trading there. While you're watching this video, I'm in Greece. So you can be in different countries swing trading in the stock market. So another pro about swing trading is that you can treat this as a side hustle. You can do this alongside of your day job, your sales career, your business, whatever it may be. And let's say you're young and you're saving up money from birthdays, from Christmas, from holidays, whatever it may be, and you start swing trading, you could just keep doing it, guys, and build up from there and have a side source of income. So that's another pro that I really like about swing trading, and let's get into the cons, guys. So one of the main cons about swing trading is that sometimes positions might take longer to play out than you initially intended, and by that I mean when you're hopping into a trade initially, you kind of have a time target of when you want to exit that position based off of previous patterns. So let's say, for example, I wanted to hop into Johnson & Johnson at $130, and based off previous patterns, last time it dipped, it took two weeks to recover to $140, so I figured, okay, in two weeks, I want to exit at $140. Well, sometimes it won't take that same amount of time period to get to that $140 sell target or whatever sell target you have. Sometimes instead of two weeks that you intend it to, that you want it to, that your goal is to get to that uh, you know, target, sometimes it might take four weeks, five weeks, a month, you know, two months, and that leads to your capital being tied up in this trade longer than you want it to. And this might lead to you missing opportunities on some other stocks. And this has really led to some problems with me, some, you know, issues issues with me over the past couple of years throughout my trading career but as you accumulate more cash the idea is you know as you save more money through your job your business whatever from day trading you'll have more cash to play with and if you're tied into a swing trade that's taking a bit longer than expected you can take some of that extra cash you're saving right and you can put that into some other opportunities that you're seeing forming so you don't miss out on those opportunities right so another con about swing trading is as you're following these trends to hop in, sometimes they can end up faking you out. So you can end up hopping into this trend at a point where you think it's a good time to hop in, and then all of a sudden it reverses. So this is a point in time where you need to be mitigating your risk. You cannot swing trade without having an OCO bracket set up, without having a stop loss set up at least, because you know if that trend does reverse on you, which happens sometimes, guys, trust me, I have experience in this, you know, you need to be able to cut your losses and preserve your capital because if you're losing more than two, three, four, five percent, this can really have a damper on your account, affect your returns, and really discourage you from continuing trading in the stock market, especially swing trading in the stock market. So now that we talked about swing trading, let's talk about some pros and cons about day trading. So I'd say the biggest pro about day trading is how much return you can actually actually make. The potential returns are very, very high. Like we said before, you know, when you're hopping into some of these penny stocks, these low cap, you know, low float stocks, maybe some leveraged ETFs, whatever it may be, you know, you have the potential to make 
5, 10, 15%, 50%. I've seen stocks and leverage ETFs, guys, some velocity volatility ETFs go up 40, 50% in a single day. The returns are absolutely ridiculous. They're stupid, right? You can make a ton of money day trading in the stock market. Another pro to day trading is you can have a lot of time in the rest of your day. If you day trade in the morning, you, you trade for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. You know, there's been a lot of times in my life where I've day traded, I've made whether it's a couple percentage points, you know, a couple of hundred dollars in the morning, it took me an hour, two hours, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do for the rest of the day, right? And that is literally what can happen some days, and a lot of people like that time, you know, the time freedom of day trading that you can work an hour, two hours, make your trades, make your money, and then have the rest of the day to yourself pretty much to work on other businesses, work on side hustles, you know, read, educate yourself, you know, exercise, whatever it may be. So those are two pros through my experience of day trading in the stock market. So some of the cons about day trading are you have to be on your computer for a couple of hours throughout the day, whether it's an hour, two hours, three hours, however long you're trading, you pretty much have to be glued to the screen because most of the time if you're day trading, a lot of what you're day trading, it's going to be moving up and down. You need to catch the moves, you need to lock in profits, and you need to cut your losses and mitigate risk. This involves a lot of attention to the computer screen, and a lot of people consider that stressful, emotional, and a con, right? And while you're looking at the screen, guys, a a lot of emotions are running through your head, right? You're like, should I sell now? Should I buy more? Should I, you know, take the profits? You know, these emotions, they play with you, which is why when you're trading, especially day trading, you need to handle your emotions and control those emotions because they can negatively dictate your decisions. They can lead you to panic sell. They can lead you to hopping into a trade when it's overbought. You can have fear of missing out, also known as FOMO. There are a lot of different emotions that could come from day trading in the stock market. A lot of beginners out there, they think you could just come in, buy a stock, and then profit over the day. You can profit over the next hour. It's a piece of cake, right? But once they see their money, you know, if you have a $5,000 position, once you start to see that money dip into the red, I swear, it's like you're in a different mindset because before you came in, you didn't even understand and realize what it's like to have your money, the hard-earned money that you've worked for moving down and then once you're in that position it's like you're very stressful you're emotional and your mind starts racing your heart starts thumping and some people you know love the thrill of actually day trading and I'm one of those people that I am a thrill seeker I'll be honest with you all which is why I'm in this crazy 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 field of trading in the stock market right I do like thrill seeking events and this is one of them in my opinion but for those that can't handle it it can really crush them and they can lose a lot of money. And another con about day trading is that the losses could be huge, right? We talked about the profits can be big in the pros section, but the losses can actually be massive. I've actually lost a lot of money day trading in my day. You know, and a lot of the times when you're day trading and you experience a loss, it leads to you bag holding that position. At least people that are more beginners in the markets, they don't cut their losses if they're down five. 10% on a day trade, they're like, I might as well just hold this now, I might as well just wait for the recovery, and that ends up losing them a lot of money, right? They bag hold, the stock never comes back, the ETF never comes back, and then they have to cut their losses at a way lower price than if they would have just cut their losses right away at 5-10% where it initially was. And I've experienced this in the past, I actually have a video dedicated to this, but just to sum it up very quickly, I was in a leveraged ETF a couple of years ago. I got in, I bag held it, I lost 40% of my money in the next couple of weeks like that. So I have experience, guys, and trust me, I'm speaking from real experience. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, if you found value in this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. And go down below, join our Discord group chat and our Facebook group. I promise you all will find a ton of value in there. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Peace out.